Hi everyone and a very warm welcome to all of you. My name is Madhulika Rachohan, mother, author, green energy enthusiast and a certified Lean Six Sigma black belt expert. Through these videos, I would like to take you all to a journey of understanding the concept of Lean, famously known as Toyota Production System, fathered by Taiichi Ono, a man who dedicated his life to the concept. <clears throat> Today, we will talk about Lean and how it can be applied to startups. Yes, we will talk about how Lean is revolutionizing and transforming how businesses are getting built. According to Eric Ries, the author of the book, The Lean Startup, startup success can be engineered by following the process, which means it can be learned, which means it can be taught. The fundamental activity of a startup is to turn ideas into products or services, measure how the customer responds, and then learn whether to pivot or to preserve. All successful startup processes should be geared to accelerate that feedback loop. The book combines the principle of lean and design thinking and creates a step flow where there is no room for the entrepreneurial ego to exist for a long time. That is to say, if the idea fails, don't stick to the failure. Find the whys and jump on the learning curve. Seek feedback and work on the new idea based on the feedback of the customer. The Lean Startup provides a scientific approach to creating and managing startups and get desired products to customers' hand faster. The Lean Startup method teaches you how to drive a startup to steer, when to turn and when to preserve and grow a business with maximum acceleration. It is a principled approach to new product development. Too many startups begin with an idea for a product that they think people want. Then they spend months and sometimes years perfecting that idea or a product without even showing the product, even in a very rudimentary form to the prospective customer. When they fail to reach broad uptake of customers, it is often because they've never spoken to prospective customers and determined whether or not the product was interesting. Now here comes the point where we need to eliminate uncertainty. The lack of tailored management processes that had led many a startup, or as Rise terms them, a human institution designed to create a new product or service under conditions of extreme uncertainty to abandon all processes. They just take a just do it approach that avoids all form of management. But this is not the only option. Using the lean startup approach, companies can create order, not chaos, by providing tools to test a vision continuously. Lean isn't simply about spending less money. Lean isn't just about failing fast and failing cheap. It is about putting a process a methodology around the development of a product. Now, what's the premise? A premise that every startup is a grand experiment that attempts to answer a question. The question is not, can this product be built? Instead, the question is, should this product be built? And can we build a sustainable business around its set of products and services? The experiment is more than just a theoretical inquiry. It is a first product. If it is successful, it allows manager to get started with his or her campaign, enlisting early adopters, adding employees to each further experiment or iteration, and eventually starting to build a product. By the time that product is ready to be distributed widely, it will already have established customers. It will have solved real problems and offer detailed specification of what needs to be built. The point now comes to building an MPV or a minimum viable product. The core component of Lean Startup methodology is the build, measure, learn feedback loop. The first step is figuring out the problem that needs to be solved and then developing a minimum viable product or an MVP to begin the process of learning as quickly as possible. 
Once the MVP is established, a startup can work on turning the engine. This will involve measurement and learning and must include actionable metrics that can demonstrate cause and effect questions. The startup will also utilize an investigative development method called the five whys by simply asking questions to study and solve problems along the way. When this process of measuring and learning is done correctly, it will be clear that a company is either moving the drivers of the model or not. If not, it is a sign that it is time to pivot or make a structural course correction to test a new fundamental hypothesis about the product, strategy, and engine of growth. Now, how to go about validating this learning? The process in manufacturing is measured by the production of high quality goods. The unit of process of <clears throat> lean startup is validated through learning, a rigorous method of demonstrating progress where one is embedded in the soil of extreme uncertainty. Once entrepreneurs embrace validated learning, the development process can shrink substantially. What it means is your growth would be faster, your learning would be faster. When you focus on figuring the right thing to build the thing customer wants and will pay for, you need not spend months waiting for the product beta launch to change the company's direction. Instead, entrepreneurs can adopt their plans incrementally, inch by inch, minute by minute. The benefits of lean startup includes not only saving time, but shorter development cycles, which mean a quicker product market fit. The product in its functions are optimized for the market. It's minimum waste. The lean startup method streamlines business activity and allocates financial resources effectively. So if your startup is struggling to get to its MVP or getting the desired response from the end customer, do apply lean and see the difference. With this, we come to an end to this edition. Don't forget to like and subscribe and comment in the comment section on what you'd like to hear more. Until next time, this is your host, Madhulika Rajahan, signing off. Have a wonderful day ahead.